Hey guys, Moms Against Medical Bullying. So I just wanted to read off this update from Senator Max Wise. So if you're in Kentucky, this is for you. Um, so let's see. He says, week three of the 2021 regular session. The Kentucky General Assembly reconvened in Frankfurt this week for the second portion of of the 2021 regular session, having now completed 11 out of the required 30 days. Legislative business at the Capitol resumed full speed ahead as both the House and Senate spent the week meeting in committees, voting bills out of the chamber, and overriding vetoes recently cast by the governor. During the recess period, the governor vetoed six priority bills. They included Senate Bills 1 and 2, and House Bills 1, 2, 3, and 5. The policy measures disproved by the governor consist of language to implement a 30-day expiration of executive orders concerning restrictions placed on schools, businesses, and nonprofits unless extended by the approval of the General Assembly. The same would go for executive orders that regulate political religious, and social gatherings or impose mandatory isolation or quarantine requirements. All of the gubernatorial vetoes listed above were overridden this week by the legislative majority and have effectively become law. As elected officials representing Kentuckians throughout the Commonwealth, we are eager to be involved in these consequential decisions moving forward. You can find more details on each of these bills in my previous legislative updates or online. It comes as no surprise that the governor has already filed litigation challenging some of the veto overrides. However, I am grateful to say that Senate Bill 9, the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, became enacted law without the governor's signature. While we were in recess, budget conference committees, including members from both the House and Senate, began meeting to deliberate an agreed-upon budget bill. Luckily, the state's consensus forecasting group predicted in December that Kentucky would see a small increase in revenue at roughly $53 million in the next year, with economists expecting the state's budget will not be as hurt by the COVID-19 as initially thought. These discussions will remain a vital part of the session as these conference committees hammer out details of the state's annual budget plan. The Senate passed several bills to the House this week, including Senate Bill 8. Senate priority legislation that provides exemptions to mandatory immunization requirements during an epidemic based on religious grounds or conscientiously held beliefs if enacted into law, it would require the Cabinet for Health and Family Services to develop and make available on its website a standards form relating to exemptions from immunization requirements. Oh, okay, so this one hasn't been enacted yet. This is passed to the House. Okay. Senate Bill 8 provides recourse for property owners to pursue legal action for intentional damages on to rental property. Okay. Senate Bill 21 allows originating hospitals to voluntarily transport mental health patients to a different hospital or facility upon staff authorization. Okay, yeah, I don't really care about that. <laughs> well, maybe I should, I don't know. Um, it would prevent an adult or child patient who has voluntarily been transported from being released during the transport to a receiving facility. The bill would also establish that a qualified mutual health professional may provide outpatient counseling to any child who is age 16 or older. Bill 38 requires cabinet to implement regulations requiring health facilities to use a smoke evacuation system during any surgical procedure that is likely to produce surgical smoke. Interesting. Senate Bill 61 establishes training standards for the staff of personal services agencies and home health agencies that serve patients with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. If enacted into law, the bill would improve the care provided by, to these patients. 
The hope is that it would also address retention of, okay, retention of direct care staff by better preparing them for job duties, resulting in less stress and dissatisfaction. Yeah, so, okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. And let's see here. Um, if you want your, for the bills here that he's saying that these bills have been passed to the House, I guess you can contact your representative or senator to support any of those bills. 